Hello, welcome back to the Ball Games 4K YouTube channel. And this is a channel where we give you reviews, playthroughs, unboxings, and we generally talk a lot of bollocks about tabletop gaming in general. In this video, we're going to be doing a run through of what we consider to be the top 10 gateway games that can sort of ease new players into tabletop gaming and not only have an easy rule set to make it make it easy for people to learn the games but also games that sort of entice people to sort of come back and play more games in the future so if you're new here then please consider subscribing to this channel leave a comment in that section down below and we'll see you after this Number 10 on this list is a trading, exploration, building sort of game. It's the Settlers of Catan. It's the it will Catan, as they call it nowadays. So in this game, you will be trading resources with other players. You'll be building roads. You'll be building buildings, building settlements, building cities. And you'll be placing these out on the board. And settlements and cities give you resources when you roll two dice. And if you're next to a chip that gives that is corresponds to that die roll, you'll get resources. You'll be using these resources to trade with other players and will trade with a bank. And you'll be building buildings, settlements, and that to get victory points to win the game. And this game is the it, it blew people away in 1995. This this game is responsible for the explosion tabletop game gaming the re-emergence from that sort of ameritrash games workshoppy sort of thing from the 80s and it's a wonderful wonderful game it's still relevant today we still enjoy playing it and um yeah that's Catan all settlers of Catan so number nine on this list is a train game and everybody hates to hate trains but this game is surprisingly fun it's a little bit dated now but it's a ticket to ride in any iteration it doesn't really matter which one you play there's a billion of them now and it's essentially a set collection game, so you'll be drawing cards out of this deck and you'll be playing cards in sets that correspond to the routes that you'll be taking on, a, on, the, on the map of America, Europe, uh, Switzerland, where, wherever, Germany, it doesn't really matter. But uh, you might have other things in there like uh, you might have tunnels or you might have ferries to, to uh, traverse. And each, each map's got, a, got its own little different rule set, but essentially the mechanisms are the same and this game has sold hundreds of thousands of copies worldwide it's a it's, it's still a fantastic game to, to introduce people into that sort of set collecting card drop a card hand management sort of kind of thing and that's ticket to ride so number eight on this list is a dice chucking sort of area majorities kind of thing it's las vegas and we use this game to sort of show people how exciting and how sort of uh, manipulative certain games can be and in las vegas you'll be throwing your dice and you'll be placing the entire lot of a number that you've just thrown onto a casino that corresponds with that number and if at the end of the round once everyone's run out of dice you have the majority of dice on that casino you will take the prize that's been allocated to that game but 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 if there's a tie then the player with the next lowest majority will take the spoils and that is the, that's the thing when people play this game they they sort of they don't think they think it's just chucking dice chucking on there and getting the majority. when they realize that you can actually place dice to prevent people from getting stuff or to manipulate people then all this this sort of uh, back and forth shouting and screaming comes out and it's a wonderful game it's a great introduction to dice throwing games and area majority stuff. So number, is it number seven? So number seven on this list is a bluffing game that is essentially just a load of beer mats and it's skull and roses. And what you'll get, you'll get four beer mats. One of them's got a skull, three have got roses and you'll be going around placing these beer mats face down in front of you. And they're eventually somebody, somebody will open a bidding saying that they could turn over a certain amount of beer mats with their own first before they reveal a skull and you'll be keep going and every, eventually everyone will pass apart from one person and then they have to reveal the amount of beer mats that they just bid on so uh, you start with your own and then you go around and if you reveal a skull you lose if you don't reveal a skull then you win it's the first to two points and this is a wonderful wonderful bluffing game there's a sort of a what they call a meta game that sort of develops through a few plays of this and you'll be 
you'll be you, you'll, you'll end up not playing your own game you'll be watching what other people are doing and then you'll you'll manipulate your own game based on how you interpret other people's actions and other people's past games so it's a wonderful game you really need to play skull and roses it's a really good way to introduce people into bluffing games and that is skull or skull and roses so number six on this list is a game that has over the years has sort of been known as various various different things and we're talking about monikers or maybe more widely known as times up and this is a card game where you've got phrases or famous people on cards and everyone will be playing out of the same deck you'll select a certain amount of cards and then what you'll do on your turn you'll stand up in front of everybody and you'll try and get your team to guess as many of the names or words on these these cards as possible and the game takes place over three rounds the first round you can say whatever you want you can do whatever you want you can make actions or whatever in the second round you can only say one word and in the third round you can't say anything at all and this game produces so many laughs it's so funny we love this game monikers it, it, monikers is our favorite variation of this one but times up is still good so get whatever one you can this plays exceptionally well at family parties or any kind of party everyone loves it and that is number five that's monikers or times up so number four on this list is a racing game that's sort of like a, a mixture of a couple of other games in rife and bright which is another cycling game and also Arve Caesar which is up there this is for Flamme Rouge and in this game you'll take control of two riders you'll be playing cards to move your riders forward on the map traversing this different types of terrain that, that manipulate that sort of change up or change down the, the speed or that you'll be traveling at and uh, yeah it's a bit of a rip-off of the other two games that we've mentioned but insofar as it being new and being so simple because rifle bike can be a little bit weird with the drifting then this is a wonderful, fantastic uh, introduction to sort of uh, car play and also racing games. So uh, yeah, that's Flamme Rouge number five. So number four on this list is a great introduction to area control and it's uh, it's Ethanos. This is Paolo Mori's game. It's a wonderful game. It looks a bit bland. But what you're doing, you'll be you're taking into control of these races and you'll be selecting cards, playing sets of cards down in front of you to take actions to get victory points and also to place markers on the map to maintain area control in certain regions and it's uh, it's ever so simple it's just a case of either drawing cards or playing cards and that's it there's a multitude of different races to choose from you could do with an expansion but if you're looking for uh, to introduce new players into area control games to sort of give them that incentive to sort of look at more deep games like Blood Rage or Rising Sun or, or uh, El Grande then um, this is the game that you really need to drag out and that's Ethnos by Paolo Mori. So number three on this list is one of our favourite racing games of all time, it's Harvey Caesar. This game is beyond simple. So you've got a deck of cards, everyone's got the same deck of cards with numbers on them from one to six. You'll be drawing three cards, playing one of them, moving your chariot that many spaces forward. But you, if you're in a lead, you cannot play a six. And there's certain check choke points in this game that block other players from moving. And you can force players onto the outside lane to make them use more expensive cards and you have to on one of the laps one of the three laps that you'll be playing you have to go down Caesar Alley and you'll have to lob a coin at Caesar and it's a fantastic wonderful game we really do like Arve Caesar it's currently out of print which is a real tragedy it really needs a reprint of the original version they did do a, a reprint which wasn't as successful but that's Arve Caesar that's our number three so number two on this list is a great introduction to the world of dexterity games and this game is meeple circus and in this game what you got is a load of sort of circus artifacts and uh, animals and different characters from the world of the circus so you might have the ringmaster you've got tigers elephants and all this sort of stuff and what you'll be doing you'll be throughout the game you'll be drawing cards that'll tell you what stuff you can select from and you'll be drafting all these bits into into your hand so, so to speak and then the game will tell you what the crowd wants to see so it might be the case that they want to see an elephant balancing on top of a, a plank of wood and a couple of balls or they might want to see a, a donkey sat on top of an elephant whilst uh, having a lion bounce up and down those heads. So you, what you'll be doing, you'll be given a certain amount of time for a soundtrack on, a, on an iPhone or an Android device or something or whatever, and you'll be just trying to stack your, stack your pieces up to please the criteria that the crowd has set. So you'll do that twice, and then in the third 
round, you'll be doing it on your own in front of everyone else. And this is really part of where the game shines in the third round. So if my mate of mine's son come round and we, we were playing Meeple Circus, we got to the third round and as he's, he's shaking in front of us and it's, it was absolutely hilarious. Meeple Circus is a great introduction to dexterity games and that's our number two. So number one on this list, and remember this list isn't really, it's a loose, loose order. So this is a, probably the, the best way to introduce people into work or placement games, right? So this is Lords of Waterdeep, and in this game it's deceptively simple. So you'll be taking one of your workers, putting them on an action space, and then you'll be taking the action. You'll be trying to collect different types of characters like wizards, thieves, and uh, clerics, and you'll be sending them off to do your dirty work for you and to get victory points so you'll be you might send them to the mountains where you'll be able to fulfill cards and you might send them to different buildings that are going to be selected throughout the game but this game essentially it's just place your worker on a space take the action and as it opens up considerably once the game starts flowing and all these action spaces start being taken up and play, played so yeah there's one expansion for this the scoundrels of skull port is definitely highly recommended and we think this is the best entry level worker placement game for non-gamers and experienced gamers alike so there you go that's our top 10 gateway games tell us what you think of this list uh, leave a comment in that section down below and we'll see you next time